What if the next big breakthrough in global agriculture isn't coming from Europe, China, or the United States, but from the steaming heart of Kenya's Rift Valley? Picture this. In a landscape where hot steam rises straight from the ground and wildlife grazes peacefully nearby, Kenya is quietly building something the world has never seen before. A project so bold, so forward-thinking, that experts say it could rewrite the future of global farming and clean energy all at once. Here in Olkaria, Naivasha, a new kind of factory is rising from the volcanic ground. It doesn't rely on coal. It doesn't burn diesel. Instead, it taps directly into the Earth's own heat, turning raw geothermal power into the lifeblood of modern agriculture. This is Kenya's 800 million US dollars green ammonia and fertilizer plant, developed through a partnership between China's Kaishan Group and Kenya's own energy giant, Kengen. And officials describe it as the world's first geothermal-powered green fertilizer plant, a facility designed to transform underground steam into the fertilizer that feeds millions. Is this Kenya has taken a major step towards uh, cutting the high cost of fertilizer after President William Ruto broke ground for the Kenjen Kaishan green fertilizer plant. The 100 billion shilling facility will use locally produced green ammonia to manufacture fertilizer, reduce import dependency and cut costs for farmers. And Kenya is not hoping to succeed. Kenya is positioning itself to lead. Because once this plant becomes fully operational, it won't just reshape Kenya's harvests, it could reset the rules of the entire global fertilizer industry. To understand why this matters, we have to talk about something that usually stays in the background, fertilizer. Around the world, fertilizers, especially nitrogen-based ones, are the quiet engine behind modern agriculture. Without them, global food production would collapse. But there's a problem. Most nitrogen fertilizer today is made from natural gas. The process is energy hungry and emits a huge amount of carbon dioxide. Globally, ammonia production alone is responsible for a significant share of industrial emissions, even before that fertilizer reaches the farm. For countries like Kenya, there's a second problem, imports. Kenya does not produce large volumes of its own fertilizer. In 2023, the country imported more than 600,000 tons, and by the middle of 2025, it had already brought in another 443,000 tons, worth nearly 60 billion Kenyan shillings, hundreds of millions of dollars, leaving the country just to keep crops growing. When global prices jump or shipping routes are disrupted, Kenyan farmers feel it immediately Fertilizer becomes more expensive, harvests shrink, and food prices rise. That's exactly what happened when energy prices spiked worldwide and supply chains were squeezed in recent years. So for Kenya, fertilizer is not just a farm input. It is a national security issue. In November 2025, President William Ruto stood at the Kenjin Green Energy Park in Okaria and officially launched an $800 million green ammonia fertilizer complex. Supply of fertilizer on events elsewhere in the world, we will not have trouble with logistics, but much more importantly, it's going to save us on our foreign exchange. The project brings together KenGen, which will supply around 165 megawatts of geothermal steam and power for at least 30 years. Kaishan Group, a Chinese energy and equipment company, which will build and operate the plant through its Kenyan subsidiary, Kaishan Terra Green Ammonia Limited. At full scale, the facility is expected to produce around 200,000 tons of green ammonia a year and convert that into roughly 480,000 tons of nitrogen fertilizer annually. More than 9,050,000 kilogram bags of product like urea and calcium ammonium nitrate Analysts following the project say that is enough to cover nearly half of Kenya's annual fertilizer demand, dramatically reducing the country's exposure to dollar-denominated imports and global price swings. Kenya's own power mix makes this possible. The country already gets over 80% of its electricity from renewables, and geothermal is one of its strongest pillars. Now that same steam that lights Kenyan homes is being redirected to feed Kenyan soils. On paper, the numbers are bold. 
Kenya's government and KenGen say the plant will create over 2,000 direct and indirect jobs in construction, operations, maintenance, logistics, and support services. Generate about 13 million US dollars in net profit every year for KenGen, on top of annual revenues estimated between 220 and 250 million US dollars for the wider project, once fully operational. But beyond the balance sheets, the real impact will be felt on almost every farm in Kenya. For years, officials have warned that high fertilizer prices directly reduce maize output. And maize is the staple food for millions of Kenyans. By producing fertilizer at home, Kenya can stabilize prices because the cost of production is tied more to its own geothermal steam than to global gas markets. Farmers are less exposed to sudden shocks in the dollar exchange rate or international shipping disruptions. Domestic supply becomes more predictable, helping farmers plan how much to plant and what they can afford in advance. In simple terms, if fertilizer is cheaper and more reliable, farmers can use the right amount at the right time. Yields go up, incomes rise, and fewer families have to choose between paying for inputs and paying for school fees. One agriculture outlet covering the project notes that once the factory reaches full capacity, its 480,000 tons per year could go a long way toward ending the cycle of shortages and sudden price spikes that have hurt Kenyan farmers for years. At first glance, Olkaria looks like a fertilizer story, but it is also a climate story. Kenya already ranks among the leading geothermal nations in the world, and more than four-fifths of the electricity on its grid comes from renewable sources like geothermal, hydropower, wind, and solar. By using that geothermal resource to power heavy industry, Kenya is trying to show a new path, industrialization without fossil fuels. Ken Jen's chief executive has called geothermal a bridge between Africa's green energy potential and its manufacturing future, arguing that projects like Olkaria are proof that clean power can support real factories, real jobs, and real exports. The project also ties into wider regional and global trends. It fits into Kenya's green hydrogen strategy, which sees renewable hydrogen and ammonium as key to de-risking fertilizer supply and opening new export markets. It supports the Africa Green Industrialization Initiative, launched at COP28, which encourages African countries to use their renewable resources to build low-carbon industries at home, rather than simply exporting raw energy. For Kenya, it's also about reputation. A successful, operating, large-scale green fertilizer plant sends a message. We are not only consuming green power, we are exporting green solutions. Of course, Kenya will not replace the global fertilizer industry on its own. But the Olkaria project is important for a different reason. It is an example. If geothermal steam in the Rift Valley can power fertilizer production, then wind and solar in other regions could do the same. Hydropower in countries like Uganda, which is pursuing its own green fertilizer projects, can also support low-carbon fertilizer production. Global studies on industry decarbonization say that green hydrogen and green ammonia will be crucial for reaching climate targets, especially in sectors like shipping, steel, and fertilizer. But those studies often feel distant and technical. Olkaria makes them real. International coverage from hydrogen and energy outlets notes that the Kenyan plant could supply nearly half a million tons of fertilizer a year to the domestic market, built directly next to the geothermal fields in the Rift Valley. If it succeeds, Kenya becomes a regional hub for low-carbon fertilizer in East Africa. Exporters who buy Kenyan crops can one day say they are sourcing food grown with lower carbon inputs which could help Kenya's produce compete in climate-sensitive markets. In other words, this is not just about bags of fertilizer on a lorry in Nakuru. It's about who sets the rules for green trade in the future. As the sun sinks behind the Rift Valley's rolling hills, the steam from Okaria continues to rise into the evening sky. For decades, that steam meant one thing, electricity. 
a symbol of progress, a sign of possibility. But today, it stands for something even greater. It stands for cheaper food for Kenyan families, for stronger, more resilient farmers across the region, for a new African voice in the global green economy. And leading this moment is Kenya's president, William Ruto, a man who has become a driving force in pushing Africa toward clean, independent, future-focused industries. He has repeatedly said that every ship arriving with imported fertilizer was not just cargo, it was a lost opportunity for Kenya and for Africa. Now, Olkaria is his answer to that challenge. A project that transforms missed opportunities into local jobs, local talent, and local ownership. A project that proves Africa is not waiting for permission to lead, it is already doing so. Ken Jen's leadership echoes this vision. They say geothermal energy is no longer just for lighting homes. It is now powering factories, farms, and futures. And Olkaria is the clearest example of that promise. If this plant performs as planned, it won't magically solve every problem, but it will show the world something powerful, that an African nation can take one of the dirtiest industrial processes on earth and rebuild it using clean energy, sustainable technology, and the spirit of a people determined to rise. This is the journey from steam to soil, from the depths of the Rift Valley to dinner tables across Kenya and beyond. This is how Kenya's $800 million green fertilizer plant could transform not only its own agricultural future, but reshape the global industry for years to come. So, what do you think? Is this the blueprint for Africa's green industrial revolution or just the beginning of an even bigger story? If you believe Africa deserves to lead in innovation, if you want more stories that highlight African progress, ambition, and potential, then please like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications. Your support helps us tell more stories that celebrate Africa's future and the leaders shaping it.